This Equipment World video is brought to you by Philips 66 Lubricants, keeping the world running smoothly. What's going on guys, Wayne here. You're watching Equipment World. Welcome into another episode of The Dirt, the video podcast that brings you interviews and discussions on the latest in construction equipment and what's going on in the construction industry in general. Coming up today on The Dirt, we're gonna be talking about two of the latest articulated dump trucks from John Deere. The new Deere 410E2 and 460E2 are Deere's two first introductions in their new E2 series lineup of ADTs. Now these new trucks not only feature a new cab, improve fuel economy, and improve productivity, but they're also the first two trucks to receive a re-engineered dump body. Now, there's a lot more to discuss with these two new E2 series trucks from John Deere, and to do that, we're welcoming in Corey Brandt today. He is a solutions marketing manager at Deere, and Corey's going to take us through everything that is new on these two new ADTs. Let's get into it. Hey, Corey, thank you so much for joining us today on The Dirt. How you doing, man? Great, Wayne. Thanks for having me again. I really look forward to these. Now, Corey, before we get into the specifics on these two new trucks, could you give me basically a 30,000 foot view on Deere's articulated dump truck lineup in general? In, in your experience, what is it that customers kind of value the most from these trucks? And, and what are the primary focuses of John Deere's development of new articulated dump trucks? So, when we when we take a step back and look at the the truck product line, uh, Deere's done some really really heavy investments in that product over the past few years. Uh, the the design teams and manufacturing teams back in Iowa really focused on what I would say four main things, and that is how do we make the machine really easy to use? How do we make it fuel efficient? How do we get it to move as much material as we can? And also, how do we make that machine last? Uh, so dependability, productivity, fuel efficiency, and, and once again, making it easy to use. So taking those kind of topics and then rolling them back into the design teams, that's what we use to develop the new E2 trucks. And you're going to see updates like new drive modes to make it easier for the operator as well as some improvements to the cab to make it more comfortable for the operator. Uh, we've also gone after some powertrain enhancements to, to save a little bit of fuel and also make that machine extremely productive. Uh, the thing that people are gonna notice most, I guess, you know, when you see these trucks is the changes to the bin or to the dump body. Uh, we've done some really great things there. And then anybody that's followed any of the recent product launches from John Deere, you're going to see some trends, right? So we've gone after the, the durability and the reliability of these machines. We really focused on hose routings and harness routings and getting rid of leak points and, and rubs. So you're going to see that stuff get carried over. Plus, we've also added some other features to just make it easier to maintain these machines, like an auto loop system. So when you roll all that together, I guess if I really had to sum it up on what Deere is doing with articulated dump trucks right now, it's we're going to make them extremely easy to use and we're going to make them easy to own. And, and that's the goal. Now, Corey, the uh, the two new trucks here are the 410E2 and the 460E2. Now, I, I know that on the 460, there's a new body offering in this ejector body option. And we're going to get into that in just a second. But, you know, have there been any changes on the standard body of these two trucks as well? Yeah. So there's there's been some big changes with uh the dump bodies or the, the bins on these trucks. And to start out, you're going to, the thing you're going to notice the most is these bins are going to be lower. And the side rails on them, they're roughly a half a foot lower than the E series trucks. And that's going to do a couple things for you. And, you know, some of it's going to be pretty obvious and some of it may not be. But the lower we keep those bin heights, uh, the faster it is for that machine that's loading it. So if you think about an excavator that's sitting on a bench trying to load these trucks, if we lower that bin height, now that excavator operator doesn't have to raise that material quite as high to swing over that truck to place that material. So we can ultimately make his cycle time quicker, which lets that truck be more productive. Another thing you're going to notice is, you know, if you're a wheel loader operator and you're loading these trucks with a wheel loader, um, Sometimes getting that bucket cutting edge and the, and the heel shoes over top of that uh, rail to get that material dumped in, 
they're constantly looking at where that bin is in relationship to the bucket. And on our E-series trucks, our rails kind of had a slope from the front to the back. Um, so they were different heights when, you, when you'd reference it against that wheel loader bucket. So we've actually made these new bin rails parallel, which is going to be a lot nicer for those wheel loader operators. And then with them being lower, uh, it's going to let that wheel loader operator be able to reach further into that bin to get that material placed. So that's doing some really good things. Um, another big advancement with those bin rails is that we've actually sloped the top of the bin rails. Uh, so that material that may have been sitting on the flat of the bin and fallen off during the, during the haul, now we're less likely to have that sit there and fall off while we're driving that truck. It's going gonna, it's gonna to leave it either at the fill site or it's gonna fall into the bin. So that's a little bit of what's going on with the bin rails. Uh, we've also made the overall bin wider and that does a couple of things for us as well. So one, it lowers the overall CG of the machine, which makes it feel more stable. And then it also acts like a fender. So if you think about material that may fall out of the bin or mud or rock that may be clinging to the tires, as you start down the haul road, that material that may fling off of the wheels is just gonna get absorbed by the truck bed and not end up going somewhere else. So really just bigger fenders, if you wanna think about it that way. We've also made some changes to the tailgate. And this is really, really important for those customers that, you know, maybe they're working in some really wet material or a slurry type material. We've actually increased the ceiling of the tailgate to the bin. So now when they put that wet material in, it's going to stay in the bin where it belongs and not leak out. Doing so, we've also narrowed up the overall width of the truck, which is going to help for transportability. So if we look at the 460E2, for example, we're going to be down under that 12-foot width, even with the tailgate installed, which is going to make it really nice for, for deploying that machine to your job sites. On the other end of the truck, so up by the headboard, We've redesigned that as well, and we've made it uh, a little bigger, and we've added more coverage to that articulation. So whether you get um, maybe some operators that are loading the truck a little aggressively, we don't have to worry about materials spilling over the front of the truck and getting down into that articulation uh, area. Or if you're going down a steep hill, we don't have to worry about it coming up into that as well. Um, in other terms, when we think about what else carried over from E-Series trucks, we still have those wear liners. So for, for customers that are working in really abrasive material or large rocks, we can equip that bin with a, with a wear liner. And we also have bin heaters for customers up, let's say in uh, you know the Northern climates where it gets cold, we can actually heat that bin up to pre prevent material from sticking. Yeah, cool. So, and, and I did want to follow up on the new body of these E2 series trucks and, and something that you mentioned there at the end, you know, you said that, you know, you guys were able to decrease the overall width of the truck while actually making, you know, the, that new body a little bit wider. Now, apart from that change, you know, what, what are kind of the other dimensional changes or engineering changes that have to happen to make a change like that possible? Yeah, the, the structural engineers that work on these trucks really went back and looked very specifically at what it takes to make a long lasting durable machine that is efficient in how we use the steel and how we, we space things out. So knowing and understanding the loads that go into the truck itself, they were able to redesign, like I said, that entire tailgate section um, to where it doesn't stick out as wide. And it's basically putting the material where it belongs and where it makes sense and not adding extra bulk where we don't need it. And, uh, and Corey, like we mentioned earlier, there is a new ejector body on that 460. Tell us about that body. So the 460E2, um, we actually teamed up with, with uh, Philippi Hagenbach out of Illinois uh, and, and worked with them to develop a ejector body that we can outfit onto that 460E2. And you know our, our dealers are set up to work directly with them so we, we sell the truck, the dealer takes the truck, works with, uh, with Philippi to get that machine outfitted with that ejector body, and we're off and running. And really, those solutions are extremely valuable when you get in some applications, especially if you're in that really, really sticky material that's hard to clean out of the bin. That ejector body is going to help push that material out so you, you stay productive. They're also really handy 
um, when there's low dump clearance. And what I mean by that is if you're working under overpasses or inside buildings where you don't have the ability to put in all the way up, uh, this is really going to help get that material out. Steep slopes is another one. So not having to raise that bin all the way up um, lets you be more productive. So you can actually spread material on the go when you don't have to worry about the stability of the truck. And it also helps with mixing materials or even if you think about, you know, that poor dozer operator at the fill site, sometimes they have a hard time keeping up. And if that, if that truck's equipped with an ejector style dump body, they can actually lay that material out so that the dozer operator doesn't have to push through a big pile and it lets the whole operation become more, more efficient. Now, now, Corey, tell us about the engine inside these trucks. Now, there's two different horsepower ratings, but is this the same engine in both trucks? And, and are there any kind of changes, you know, in this engine between those those older E-series models and the new E2 series models? So we, we've done some, some pretty big things with these engines uh, over time. And, you know, to your question about are they the same? Um, kind of, I think, is the right answer. So they're both going to be a John Deere PowerTech 13.5 liter engine. They're both going to have six cylinders. Um, the real magic that goes on with these is what we call the John Deere Flex Power System. And what that is, um, you know, having, having John Deere Power Systems on board and integrated into a lot of our solutions, we're able to dial those engines in to exactly what we want them to be for each application. And, you know, these newer engines are all electronically controlled. And, you know, it can be whether it's injection timing or the fuel delivery, the geometry of the turbo, um, the type of governor, how that, how all those different components interact with each other. We're able to really tailor these engines to do exactly what we want them to do. And the, the balance here is having enough power and torque to do what we need it to do while maintaining that balance with fuel efficiency. And that's why you're gonna see those different power levels based on the different trucks. Uh, it's really to go after that balance. Uh, the other thing that I want to hit on while we're talking about engines a little bit is we made some changes and, and we've we've changed some hardware between you know E-series and E2 on the engine itself. And we've also gone after some wire harness changes, going after that durability and reliability side of things. And then we've also looked at the engine and powertrain as a system. And what I mean by that is we've gone in and looked at what I'm going to call parasitic load. So the load that's on the engine, even when the, when the truck isn't really doing much as we would think about it. So if you think about cooling fans or different pumps, whether it's hydraulic, cooling, um, AC condensers, all of those things that kind of run in the background, we really looked at those and tried to figure out how to make the entire system as efficient as possible. And what that's going to do is it's going to free up that power that we can use when we really want it, right? So when we're trying to move material in these trucks, now we have that added power that's not going, what I'm going to call, to waste. And we're also going to save some fuel by doing that as well. So we've done some really good things there. Now, Corey, the next big feature on these trucks are the three drive modes. Let's start with the normal mode. Now, now, even though this mode is, you know, quote unquote normal, you guys have actually been able to reduce fuel consumption in this normal mode operation by 7% over the current uh, E-Series trucks. How was that done? So, Wayne, these drive modes are probably the coolest thing on these trucks. And, you know, as you said, normal mode, we're still going to save fuel. And... You know, when you when you break it down into littler bites, normal mode is going to feel very, very, very similar to what our E-Series trucks felt like. The beauty of it is, you know, I, I talked a little bit about those electronically controlled engines and our friends at John Deere Power Systems really understanding both the engine and the application and being able to tailor that stuff in. I talked about those parasitic loads, you know, being able to, to tailor those down and, and really be efficient about the design of the truck. All of that stuff rolls into what makes our normal mode extremely productive and extremely fuel efficient. And, and that's what people are going to notice. So to give you a little bit more detail on that, um, we really dove into how our transmission acts, what our engine's doing how we have our hydraulic systems designed 
and where we, when we use pressure and when we use flow and kind of how those work together. Um, we also looked at how we accelerate the engine, right? So the if we you know really try to accelerate it quick, now we have to move all of this mass very quickly, and that takes a lot of fuel. And if we slow it down just a little bit, we don't really give up any acceleration time. We're just smarter about how we let those systems absorb that energy and get everything rolling. So the big thing here is, uh, you know, we've we've gone after all these different components and really tailored them in to make our normal drive mode be extremely productive and extremely fuel efficient. And uh, let's go into the other two drive modes now, eco and traction. Tell us a little bit about those. Before we get into that, I do want to take a quick second and talk to you about our sponsor for this video, Phillips 66 Lubricants. Moving piles of earth, extreme hot and cold conditions. You know, obviously construction and mining are tough environments. They're run by tough machines and those tough machines need the toughest lubricants available to protect them. Now, there are thousands of mining operations in the U.S. and 60% of them trust just one brand to keep their equipment going, and that is Phillips 66 Lubricants. Now, they've put thousands of hours into testing, and when you look at the results, it's pretty clear why so many operations put their trust in Phillips 66. Take Gardol ECT. It far outperforms the competition in wear protection and corrosion tests. So whatever you've got, graders, end loaders, dump trucks, Phillips 66 will protect it. Our thanks again to Phillips 66 Lubricants, keeping the world running smoothly. And uh, let's go into the other two drive modes now, eco and traction. Tell us a little bit about those. So, you know, and, and the other question I sometimes get is, why do we have drive modes, right? People just want to get in and they want to move dirt. Uh, and really what we did with drive modes, we thought a lot about what makes sense, right? And when we talk to customers out there, there's, there's a few things that every customer always wants. They want it to be easy. They want it to be comfortable. They want it to perform and they want it to last. And if we nail that, we're off to a really good start. So making it, making it easy helps get those new operators in the seat and helps them be productive. Making it comfortable helps keep them in the seat. Making it perform helps that customer continue to be profitable. And then also making it last, well, that's gonna help extend the life of that truck and, and ultimately make that customer more successful. So that all played into why we developed those drive modes. The other thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to give the, the customer a choice. Do you really, really wanna save fuel? Do you wanna be productive or do you just want to take the guesswork off your operators and make that machine function extremely well in every application? So we already talked about normal mode and all the things that that's going to do. If we go to the, let's say we swing over a little further to the, to the fuel efficiency side, we look at eco mode. What eco mode is going to do is it's going to smooth out the uh, response of the engine. So if you get an operator in there and they immediately mash the accelerator and try to take off, it's still gonna go and it's gonna be productive, but it's gonna smooth out those engine accelerations. So it's gonna allow that machine to get up to speed, maybe just a little bit longer, uh, but it's gonna, it's gonna get there. Uh, the other thing it's gonna do is lower the overall engine speed. So we're not gonna spin the engine as fast, which is gonna help save some fuel. Um, with that said, it's still gonna achieve that maximum ground speed. So you're still gonna be able to be productive and you're still gonna be able to get the material where it needs to go. This is really targeted to those customers that really wanna save fuel. And maybe, you know, maybe they're in a condition where their trucks don't have to push it quite as hard. And maybe they can go a little slower and give up a little bit of that productivity and really save uh, the fuel and help balance out that bottom line. Now on the flip side, if we look at traction mode, what traction mode was designed to do is really take the operator guesswork out of difficult conditions. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna lock that machine into a, a first gear start. So you're gonna have really controllable torque and power when you're taking off. So if you think about an operator that 
maybe maybe it's a muddy fill, uh, load site where the where they're being loaded, and they load that truck up, and now he's got to get that material moving. Well, it's going to let that be a really, really controlled acceleration out of that load site. And it's going to fully apply all the diff locks when that machine takes off. So when I mean all the diff locks, I'm talking about the inner axle diff locks. So locking up the front axle to the mid and the rear. And then it's also going to lock the cross axle diff locks, which is going to give you true six wheel drive, which is really going to help get that material moving. Um, it's also going to control how the engine accelerates, which is really going to help keep from, from breaking traction. And like I said, it's just, it takes the guesswork out of knowing how to configure the truck for that environment. Um, the other nice part about it is it's still going to allow the operator to be in control. So even if they want to manually apply the diff locks, they can still do that but the traction mode system is just going to try to be more proactive at that for them. Now, Corey, what are the specific fuel savings that you can kind of expect with that new eco mode? If you're already getting a 7% reduction in normal mode, what can you expect on top of that from eco mode? As far as um, the amount of fuel that we can save, of course, Wayne, it depends on, on a ton of variables. Of course, you know, um, what your transport course looks like, whether you're loaded or unloaded. Um, but, I would ballpark it to be about roughly a 10% fuel economy improvement from eco mode to normal mode. So it is, uh, it is pretty, pretty big. Now, another kind of, you know, big change here is going to be the new wheel speed sensors that have been added to these trucks. Uh, kind of explain what those do and how they improve the function of the automatic differential locks on these trucks. Well, the wheel speed sensors, um, basically on these two E2 trucks, uh, replace the, the ground speed radar system that we had um, in the E-Series. And, you know, it's a small part of the big picture, right? So when we look at what what the way the auto diff lock systems work and, and diff lock in these trucks in general, these wheel speed sensors just help make it even more proactive. And maybe maybe if I explain a little bit about what they are and where they're at, uh, it'll, it'll kind of make sense a little bit. So... Each axle is going to have two wheel speed sensors, one at each wheel. And what they're looking for is a mismatch between any one wheel or any group of wheels. And that's how it's going to basically determine if anything is slipping through an algorithm. So it knows what's going on and what speed each wheel should be at, whether it's in a turn or straight. And it can automatically adjust on the fly to start applying diff locks, whether it's inner axle diff lock between, you know, like I said, between the axles or cross axle diff locks between wheels and really tailor it down to make sure that we're getting the most tractive effort out of these trucks that we can. Um, the beauty of the wheel speed sensors is they're extremely quick and they're extremely consistent and repeatable. They give very good data back to the system to let it know what's going on. Why that's important is it's going to help with a couple of things. One, it's going to help reduce uh, wear and tear on the, you know, on the tires. It's going to make tires last longer. And it's also probably going to help with fuel economy. So if we're not running diff lock when we don't need to be, we're going to also save some fuel on that side of it as well. So like I said, it's all about trying to predict better when we need to apply diff lock and when we don't. And that's really where that's going to shine. So if we look at you know, what makes auto diff lock really work well and, and what it's doing kind of behind the scenes. You know, we're looking at what kind of grade the machine's on. You know, if it's on a steep hill, maybe we're going to apply it a little quicker. If we're at a low speed, we're going to start thinking about, you know, do we need diff lock? Do we not? And then also kind of where we're at in that articulation, um, you know, the steering, the amount of steering that we have going on with the machine, all that stuff's going to roll in and, and, really look at when it makes sense to apply those diff locks. And uh, at Corey, what are the more kind of tangible improvements that these wheel speed sensors bring to the trucks over the old radar systems that used to be used? You know, the, the ground speed radar uh, needed visibility to the ground. So in a lot of cases, that left it mounted somewhat vulnerably. Uh, and it was, you know, trucks operate in some pretty harsh environments sometimes. And having to have that radar open to the ground so it can see 
um, you know, what's going on versus having these wheel speed sensors integrated directly into the axles. Um, it's going to make it a lot more uh, durable solution. So, you know, now with these wheel speed sensors, you're actually able now to measure actual wheel rotations, you know, wheel by wheel rotation. And then you're feeding those, you know, that data through a very complex algorithm. You know, it sounds like the data that you're getting from these sensors is going to be much, much more accurate than what you were getting on the radar system. Is that is that correct? It's just a more reliable data set coming into the machine. So really knowing what each wheel is turning at or the RPM of each wheel that's what really allows that system to know what diff locks to apply when. And, and it, it helps reduce the unnecessary applies and make sure that we're proactively applying when we need it. And, and that's what really makes that shine. It's, it's knowing exactly what every wheel on the truck is seeing and pre-planning what's going to happen next. No, that's really cool. It's a huge change in and of itself. So, uh, but but moving on, you know, there there have been some changes to the retarder modes on these trucks as well. Talk about those changes. So the retarder mode settings also changed a lot. And in the past with E Series, we would let the operator tailor in how much retardation they wanted, and it was basically pick a number uh, from ten percent to one hundred percent in ten percent increments to dial up the amount of retardation that the truck would apply. And uh, I guess the downfall of that system was the requirements that the operator needs changes, whether they're laden or unladen, or if they're in steep conditions one day and flat the next, or even how they drive the truck, those, those settings needed to be adjusted. What we've done with E2 is, once again, trying to make it easier for that operator so they don't have to go in and constantly make adjustments. We've narrowed it down to low, medium, and high. And basically, they pick the setting that appeals to their driving style. And when we do that, the machine's smart enough now to know whether it's laden or unladen. So it will automatically adjust the amount of retardation based on, on the capacity of the truck. So as soon as the operator releases the accelerator pedal, it's going to start applying uh, the retardation. And it's going to build it up as it needs more or less which is really going to help save service brakes and make the truck extremely controllable. Uh, and even, even help, have, we have a feature called uh, descent control. So if you're going down a steep grade and you get into the service brakes, uh, it's going to know to start applying more retardation based on the characteristics of the truck. Uh, now, Corey, moving on to the cab, uh, th these trucks do have a new cab as well, new cab design. What can customers expect to find that's new inside of these cabs, and, and, and how do these cabs compare to the E-Series trucks? A lot of changes in the cab. Um, first thing I notice when I get in is the new the new monitor, or the uh, what we call the PDU, the primary display unit. And we've done some nice things with that, so we're trying to keep that consistent look and feel across a lot of the other products. So once again, if you've seen any of the new Deer products, chances are you've seen this PDU or this new monitor. And it's extremely easy to navigate, it's clear, and it shows you everything you need to see. Um, the other thing that you're gonna notice is we're trying to get the cabs to more of an automotive style look and feel. And if you remember back on the e-trucks, we had multiple SSMs, uh, we've actually gone down to just one SSM, and we've added what we call an automotive style uh, turn selector. And that has the ability to have the lights, uh, wipers, turn signal, all built into that steering column selector, uh, which is really, really intuitive and easy to use. We've also moved the head, uh, the A-Track controls to the headliner, just like we have in a lot of our other products. And we've also offered that automatic temperature control option now as well. So that's another really, really nice feature. And, and you know, speaking of options, we've, we've added a lot of the same options that we've added with other products to really go after making that operator comfortable. So, you know, the new premium heated and ventilated seat with the leather accents, heavy duty air suspension to really take care of that operator, that's now available. Uh, we've also added, um, you know, long lasting vibration resistant LED lights. So we don't have to worry about bulbs failing. Uh, and, and it really does light up the entire environment around that truck. 
so those are kind of some of the things there. Um, and then, you know, we really want to, we really want to make that operator comfortable and, and keep them protected. So we offer a few different uh, seatbelt options. We have the, the traditional three inch lap belt. We also have a four point harness that's available now. And we can also tie those together with what we call a seatbelt minder. And the way that works uh, is it actually puts a green beacon on the roof of the cab. So from the outside of the truck, you can tell when the operator has their seatbelt on. As long as they have their seatbelt on, the green beacon will, will indicate that they are wearing the seatbelt, which is really nice. And that's also tied into the JD Link system. So, you know, if I'm a fleet manager or a, or a superintendent, I'll get an, a, a notice if I have an operator that maybe forgot to put their seatbelt on and let them know that that's important. And Corey, one of the other kind of design differences in this new cab is that you've got a new sealed switch module that you guys are saying reduces the number of switches in front of the operator by 25%. So, you know, obviously when you're reducing the number of switches in front of the operator by, you know, a quarter, that's going to clean things up considerably. So, you know, how did you guys manage that? And, uh, you know, plus there's, there's, there's been a lot of that type of work going on with new machines in general. A lot of manufacturers really working on decluttering that operator environment, making it less like an airplane cabin, more like an automobile. Talk about uh, th those kind of changes in development as well you know with these series trucks we had basically two ssms we had one that controlled what i'm going to call the the secondary controls right so hvac uh lights wipers the seated the the heated seat was actually included in that ssm and then we had the second ssm that controlled the the functions of the machine so engine transmission uh diff locks various other machine settings what we've done with E2 is tried to take some of the confusion away from having buttons everywhere that do all kinds of things. And we really tried to do two things. One, we wanted to give it more of an automotive look and feel. So people, you know, if they drive a pickup truck to work, they get out of their pickup truck, they get in the, in the ADT and it feels like home. So that's what drove a lot of that you know, the automotive style um, turn selector with, with the lights and the wipers built into it. Um, that way they don't have to take their eyes off what they're doing to make adjustments to those. And then with the regular SSM, you know, we've done things with that too. So we've reduced the complexity of the retardation, right? So being able to set the retarder in just simple settings, um, making diff lock even easier, uh, and then just decluttering all of those other settings that we had to have built into the SSM and getting that stuff to where it's automated and you don't have to think about it, that really cleans up the cab a lot. And then, like I said, having the, the new automatic temperature control and the HVAC settings all built into a module, well, that eliminates a lot of buttons as well. We're able to have adjustable dials now, which is really nice for making quick adjustments. And uh, finally, Corey, finishing up here on the maintenance side of things with these new E2 series trucks, what can customers expect? And uh, tell us about the warranty on these trucks as well. Maintenance is something that's probably on the top of every ADT owner's mind, and and rightfully so. I mean, it is important. Um, and it, and it, it should start with a really, really strong maintenance plan. And, and a good maintenance plan is going to start with doing a really good job on your daily service. And what we've found, you know, across the different products is if it's easy, people will do it. And if it's hard, that's when stuff gets overlooked. So what we really wanted to focus on with these new E2 trucks is making them extremely easy to do the daily service. And we've actually taken it to the point where you can do it all from the ground. So there's no need to climb up on the machine or lift heavy hoods or open really heavy doors. Uh, you can do everything you need to do from the ground. And if you think about that, so you know, if you're up in the northern climates where it's cold or frosty, we don't have to worry about slipping. Um, if you're on a site that requires tie-offs, um, we don't have to do that to do our daily service. So we're trying to make it easier for those things uh, to make sure they get done. Another important topic when you start thinking about maintenance is greasing. And we actually offer different levels of greasing because there's different, there's different thought processes behind how a machine should be greased. Um, some customers really want their operators to go around and hit every grease fitting at every grease location so they physically look at the machine. We have what's called point of use grease. It does just that. 
The next step up from that is what we call the uh, banked grease uh, option, where we actually run remote lines to a bank. So it's, it's still manually greasing, but they're in a nice convenient location. The, the kind of premium package is our new factory integrated auto loop system. And this is actually extremely slick. It can be controlled through the, the PDU or the new monitor. Uh, it's tied into JD Link, so it gives you alerts if something's not working right. And it also automatically greases that machine while it's in operation. And that does some really good things for you. So if you think about how that auto loop system's pushing grease out to those pins during normal operation, it's keeping them flushed out you know, of, of water, mud, dirt, whatever, and really keeping that joint clean. And they also have, they, they maintain that same point of use grease fitting. So even if you have an auto lube system and maybe you're worried about something or you wanna be able to physically make sure you can get grease in a pen, there's still a way to get grease into that, which is, uh, it, it's a really good, good tool. Um, you know, I also, we, we can't forget about the great stuff that we had going on with these series as well, too. So we still have that tire pressure monitoring system. And, you know, it's it's not hard to check tire pressures, but it takes time. And a lot of times it gets overlooked. And at the cost of tires and, and you know, trying to really get the most out of that investment, having those tire pressures set right is going to help your fuel economy. And it's going to help make those tires last longer. So having that tire pressure monitoring system is a, is a, a really good advantage to having that on the machine. We've also done some things in terms of just general machine maintenance. So when we think about servicing after treatment solutions, um, you know, our DPF system, we've designed it to last what we're going to call the, the life of the machine. So it's going to last out until it's time to do a rebuild on the engine. Um, and then also on the depth system, we've added a, an inline depth filter. So instead of opening the tank to access that filter, it's now in line. So it's easier to service that should we need to, to get in there and do that. So we've done some really good things with that. Um, you mentioned a little bit about the warranty. And, you know, Deere's done some pretty bold things with warranty on these trucks. And, you know, I'm not going to get into all the details here today, Wayne. But what I'd really, really encourage is... Uh, to have your listeners get in touch with uh, with their local dealer or even come out and visit us at, at deer.com and see some of the great things we're doing with these trucks. Well, all right, Corey, man, that's all the time that we've got on the dirt today. But thank you so much, man, for for dropping in and talking to us about these new E2 Series trucks. Uh, like I said, appreciate the time, man, and uh, be well. All right, great, Wayne. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed being on you. Uh, stay safe. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this episode of The Dirt and our look here at the new 410E2 and 460E2 articulated dump trucks from John Deere. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you again to Corey for joining us today to explain everything new on both of these trucks. Hey, if you like this video and found you know any of the information in it useful in your next you know equipment purchase or rental, do us a favor and hit that like button below. It really helps us out. Oh, and also, don't forget to leave a comment. We always love to hear your thoughts on all of the latest machines. Hey, and if you want more coverage, more videos of construction equipment, head on over to our website at equipmentworld.com. And while you're there, subscribe to our daily newsletter. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button below and be sure to click the bell as well. Turn on notifications so you're getting up to the minute alerts whenever we drop a new video. All right, guys, thank you again so much for watching. We always appreciate the time. We'll see you in the next one.